Thanks for staying with us. Now, tribal intolerance over the years leading to conflict has taken a huge toll on the economic power of some regions of our nation. Perhaps estimating the cost of some of our actions can help us rise above tribal bias. As it's commonly said in Nigeria, issues that have to do with Naira and Kobo have no tribe or religion. Now, growing up in Kaduna, I saw so much trade investment and intertribal engagements as soon as the now unending um, clashes started there was heavy migration out of that state and wherever i go back whenever i go back to um, home to kaduna it's almost like a ghost town lagos on the other hand has experienced a high population explosion as it seems very accommodating of non-tribal citizens and the results show on her gdp now how do we restore intertribal relationships right to boost our economy in all regions of our dear country. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 All right, ladies, um, it's our ladies' night out. We're going to open the phone lines at the second half of the conversation, but I wanted to do like a background, um, um, what's it called? The background foundation, laying it down. I was going to take you on your introductory. Okay, which is what? We were talking about the fact that you reflect upon Lagos. Yes. That Lagos is taking the game. I mm. don't think so. I think it's such a burden. On Lagos. Because on the facility and the infrastructure. Absolutely. Look at the influx of northerners. They've taken over the streets. Most of them are the beggars. So it's also a burden on Lagos. Mm. I don't see the benefit because Lagos is a small country. Yeah, so but it's a small state. But economically, I mean, activities are going on. Even with. Even we don't have the infrastructure to support so, it. Yeah, so, that, so this is why we're having. And insecurity is on the rise. Yes. It's on the rise. It's on the rise. If Absolutely. every state in Nigeria mm -hmm. has probably, maybe not vertical development mm. but if at least they are par yes people will be free to migrate live anywhere anywhere the pressure on lagos will be reduced mm -hmm. everybody can i can live in kano i don't have to live in lagos but now once you're finishing school you're thinking of lagos is it a lagos or abuja mm. okay let me come to you um ak yes please what do you think you know the impact of travel bias. What do you? How how bad do you think it has really impacted our our economy in Nigeria? I think you know why I started off with a smile because what has it not done? Because I'm just thinking, what is the, what can we not link to it? You get um, tribalism affects the way we think, what we believe, what we choose to believe, how we choose to treat people, hmm. the attributes we. At, um, the things that we attribute, so the characters that we attribute to a particular person. Mm -hmm. So when you hear that somebody's from the south, what do you think first? When you hear that somebody's from the south and is angry, you say, oh, that's really gay. Mm -hmm. So tribalism laces all our thoughts. So if somebody behaves in a certain way, you say, ah, he's behaving like that because he's from the north. People from the north behave that way. Mm -hmm. Or oh, he's intelligent because he's from this place. Oh, oh she's Speaks like this because she's from that place. She knows how to cook because she's so it's an unconscious bias that, that you are. Because when it comes to if most of the time I say, you know, I can cook, and the first thing is, you know, oh, it's because you're from this place. Mm. So you get so it is there is nothing that does not affect it, both positively and negatively, both consciously and unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Even you who are, even myself. I am unconsciously biased if I'm not consciously so. Mm. So there is nothing that I cannot tie to tribalism in this country. It has built a lot of mistrust. Finance the main thing. It has built a lot of uh, mistrust. But in places where you see where people can coexist to a certain level, to a certain tolerance, such as Lagos, you can see the development that happens. Mm. Now, Lani was saying everybody runs to Lagos. Why? Because there's a certain level of tolerance that Lagos has for everyone that comes here. You know, that the certain right that we all feel we belong. So Lagos in itself kind of, um, should I say, unifies people to a Melting certain point. extent. Yes, I know that they're tribal lines, mm -hmm. okay? But to a certain extent, everybody feels somehow that they belong. But tribalism has injured us. So I, I was listening to the show yesterday and, you know, both Isi, both Isi and Uti did justice to the topic. Tribalism has encouraged mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So we accept things from our king's men, just like the quote that we had yesterday, you know, 
leave him with our thief. Is his, it is someone else's thief, kill him. Mm. It's our thief. You know, leave, leave the thief. Trick him. <laughs> you get it has made the offices, yes, it has made the offices that people occupy. We now have people without merit in those offices. Why? Because it is a turn for that ethnic group. It's a turn for that person. So let me just, you know, as we progress, I, I would share more. Let me just um, let okay. you girls uh, just, you know, <laughs> They're already agreeing with Lamy on her position with, um, um, I, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll come back to that question. They disagree with you, but go ahead. Um, so, Lamy, impact, right? The way I see this thing, right, if we go back to history, a lot of people lived in Kano, non-Northerners, um, I mean, all the people that I know that are my friends today that we grew up in Kaduna, they are not Northerners at all. They are either from Edo State, from Yoruba land, and all of that. As in, we, 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 it, for us, Kaduna was a melting point for all tribes to, to thrive. And guess what? The economy in Kaduna was booming, right? Of course, then NNPC was working. The textile companies were working. So you had a lot of people living there and working there, and they were secured. But as soon as the, the riots started, you know, and it was becoming like an unending thing every time, Sharia crisis, Sharia riots, Sharia this, Sharia that, a lot of people started leaving Lagos State. You know, I mean, sorry, Kaduna State. And moving down south, right? And now I can, I, I can see that when you go back home, right, to Kaduna State, there's zero, you could, there's zero economic activity going on there, right? So it seems like I would still say that Lagos for me, it's like a New York, right? Whether they like it or not, the onus is on Lagos State government, you know, to improve and invest more in their infrastructure so that they can expand the capacity. Because truly, I cannot, you cannot, all states cannot develop at the, at the, at the same pace. Because my, in our minds right now, right, as, as, um, as Nigerians, when you go to the north, the way they are thinking is completely skewed. It's different from the way you would think. Right, so you really at, at the point where we are at, you know, so you I'm, I'm suggesting that Lagos should, should invest more. No, you, they can't take all the budget, but let them invest no, more no, in no, their I infrastructure. Think, I think that Lami has a point, though, and I, I slightly disagree with you, Uwa. Lami, before you enter, I slightly disagree with you, Uwa. It is the responsibility of every government to provide for it. So, you, before you were governor, you know how many people were in your state. Okay, the infrastructure for your state. So if anybody runs to Lagos and put the money on Lagos, what are those people doing with the money that they have to develop their state? You get so I get the burden of infrastructure that Lam is talking about, and it's a real problem. Mm. I think the problems um, um, generate from a failed federal system. Yeah. Thank you. Because if there is a conducive environment in Kaduna. <laughs> see, when I when I when I wanted to serve, believe me or not, I wanted to go to Joss. Because I heard so much about jobs. I wanted to be in jobs. I grew up in Portacot. I never wanted to live in Lagos. That was before all the riots. Because I just felt that people were living a chaotic life. Yeah, so Joss was another very peaceful Lagos? place. Very peaceful. We used Security. to go on a road trip to Joss. Security. So it's from a failed federal system. It's from a failure of the government to provide the basic infrastructure. It's from a failure of the governors to do what they're supposed to do. So it's, it's a long line of failure that is making Lagos of the population. Because you made a, a very good point. If everybody provides infrastructure for their people, opportunity to generate that income by even giving them the basic things for them to operate, we will not be where we are. Absolutely. Not but everybody wants to live in Lagos. Lagos yeah. is chaotic. Mm, and it's expensive but as well. That, that because part of this are reasons why Lagos is expensive. Mm. Look at the rent, where seventy percent of your income goes to rent. Mm. That is not sustainable. Everything is fragile, and it's going to. That is why you were saying that when you were growing up, quite a number of people were in Kaduna. I was going to say, at that time, Nigeria's unity from nineteen sixty up until here was artificial and very fragile. That is why it has cracked. It was cracking, but now it has just given way completely. Mm. And what happened is the imperialist, the British government, they brought, they lumped us together without our will. Mm. If you look at the United States, there are 50 states, but they are operating a federal system of government where every state is allowed to develop on its own merit. But don't forget that when they were going to bring them together, you as a country would apply. Mm. I want to be part of you. Do you understand? Exactly. Before they bring you in. In Arizona, Arizona is divided into two. There's a part that falls to the United States, 
and there's a part that said we want to remain in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And this, there the was a demarcation. <laughs> Go and see the two mm. today. It was a will of the people. But in this case, exactly. it was an artificial. So the ethnic diversity was already there. Mm. Now, look at, because I went back to history to look at what is the genesis of this problem. In 1959, when they did federal elections, look at the parties. AG, Yoruba State, led by Awolo. Mm. NCNC, yeah. the likes of Aziko. No. Hey, NPC, the likes okay. of Tafa Abaliwa. Nigeria yeah, yeah. was built on ethnic tribalism, whether we like it or not. Mm. Look at the way they started voting at that time. When the, the fragility of like, the unity was tested between 1960 and 1966, that was when the coup. And what, what happened? What ignited the coup? It was really, it was ethnicity. Ethnicity, yeah. And till today, we have not gotten it right. And we will never get it right unless we go back to the drawing board. So look at the constitution we have today. Mm. It was given, it was bequeathed to us by the military who was operating a unitary system. Mm. So they gave us a unitary constitution disguised as a federal mm -hmm. system. Mm. It is not going to work. So you are all saying tribalism, tribalism. Oh, the issue is human beings. The way we are wired, we are not wired, we are wired to rely on each other. Mm. And part of relying on each other is when you can speak My a life. false sense of common, uh, you know, to have something in common. Familiar. If you go to New York today and you hear somebody speaking your language on the bus or on the train, mm. you will get attracted to that person immediately. Mm. So it's a human nature. Most Afri and look at the state of most development in Africa. It's the same problem. To Mali, everywhere. It is because of this. Africa as a whole is a, we are multi-ethnic. It's a multi-ethnic continent. So the imperialists came thinking that they can just divide us like this, with like slice of, you know, Brilliant. butter. <laughs> and that was, they were the ones that gave us the bad foundation. Mm. What they should have done instead of federal government, was, should have been a regional government or even a confederate government mm. where the center will be so weak mm. and the states because going back to regional government now is going to be very very tough difficult you think so uh -uh. Ooh, uh. even within your edu states <laughs> do you people agree <laughs> <laughs> where is, where is I mean, going to look be at, at the other states now ah. it's so called Ijo, 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 uh, 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 that's true hmm. But at least we can limit the problems. I know it's coming down. Yeah. But at least if we now do it by public states, it will be limited. People will now focus on the local government. Mm. The local, local government will be more, they will be stronger. Mm. So the focus will be there. Then you cannot develop education, develop healthcare. But you cannot develop, Nigeria is a 200 and something million people. The federal doesn't have the capacity for it. So hmm. it is not going to work. We are just, we are all screaming. But let me, in all these things you're saying, in the history yes, that you are, you are giving us, I mean, I'm in my 30s. What happened between then and now? Are you trying to say that, so okay, what went wrong? Because when I was growing up, when I see a Nigerian, is a Nigerian. You, because how old were you at that time? Well, when I was employment. you. That's my point. Like, <laughs> you. No, when I was you. So if no, you listen to was... Lami, when she was, no, give me that history, because I was going to come um, to talk about that. You can see from the beginning it was divided. It was a matter of time. It was, it was a matter of time. We have always been along divided lines. And that is why the battle of corruption, ah, I don't know when, when it can be won. So let me not be very negative. Because as long as tribalism persists, as long as we keep seeing ourselves like my brother can stay there, I can steal officially, we would never conquer corruption. Let me not use the word never because it's very strong. It will be almost impossible to conquer it. So have we been divided from time past? Yes. It's just that where our population is increasing. The pot that was holding us in that our fight is cracking, as Lamy has said. So the North has always had a Northern Party, Southern Party, but we had divided it a long time ago. And the people that um, you know amalgamated us did it for their convenience. Mm. You know, it was for them to rule better and not just because they wanted to uh, put us as a people together, it was for their convenience. Mm. So, I, I, is making a very strong point, and I and I think probably maybe it's your upbringing. I can't even so say you talk about upbringing. Uh, there were lots of wait, wait, I've always thought wait, this way. Me, that is why you. Yoruba can yeah, would at that time will not marry Igbo. Till today, it's it's it is even now that we're breaking those things. 
you are a house person, you are going to bring a thousand better. Are you mad? You want to marry them? I, 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 I was wait. going to say that even from the home, they encourage it. An average Nigerian family accommodates tribalism. Are you sure about no, this? No, now when you bring, even my dad will tell you, ah, Ondo people are this. <laughs> Bara people are this. Don't, my That's father really categorically Europe. told us that I cannot go to the East for anybody's marriage, wedding ceremony. If you don't choose somebody from the Southwest, when I get to the border, I will just wave to you. Uh -uh. And that's it. He told us <laughs> that. But Owanis can tell true. They're very true. Okay. And they're very so how do you expect me to I now go to school? I think it's even in this modern times that people are allowing some of these mar uh, uh, um, inter-tribal marriages to occur. It was a very big thing. So you marry your kind. You marry your kind. You marry your oh, ethnic. Okay. I can't so, even. Sorry, you know, even sorry. In, in the South, they were divided. I can't even. Sorry to cut you. <laughs> even that intra-tribal marriage you're saying, most of it is artificial. Ask people that are in it. They will tell you it is not easy. You will follow your husband's his village, and they would, because they don't like you. The man married you because he insisted. But they will show you, Pepe. You will go for Christmas, and they will be speaking their language, and they obviously know that you don't understand. <laughs> is that not tribalism within the marriage? <laughs> but I'm married to a northerner. Now. Okay, so okay, so let me explain why I'm. And saying. I'm married to a westerner. Oh, you are married. You are. I will, I will cheat you nicely. Well, I'm telling you that these things are allowed so now. Can it's more. Because we need to break it down now. I can more. So the point I was trying to make before Lamy is attacking me, you know, I will leave two of you today <laughs> to, to talk. I was saying that, you know, the, the, the number of traders in the north, right, we're mostly Igbos, mm. right? Mostly Igbos and the Westerners. Do you get? I mean, my mom was from Edo State, in Kaduna State. We had loads of, in our restaurant, we had heavy patronage because they were just in love with that you know a different kind of meal from what they eat because this was an Edo woman properly cooking well a good meal so i'm saying that just imagine the amount of commerce that was going on corner i know my mom used to you would go to kano you know even in kano as well they had a lot of um foreigners there trading right but all of these well, things well, you are, well, I'm saying, you are mixing two things wait, wait, together wait now. we are talking about the impact on the economy no, no, let's <laughs> well, all of these things right I, so are we saying that you know now you're making me lose my thoughts i'm sorry <laughs> you're making me, sorry. making me lose my thoughts so sorry. are we saying that all those things that happened that people were investing then it was just waiting to happen no there was genuine ah. there was genuine um what's it called willingness to leave your place of um, um what's it called because we were actually tolerant of each other then so i'm saying that what brought the what made the gap wider listen Ua. Ua, any country Ua, that has... please can i ask you a question yes please let me ask you a white question today Ua, what did you think the problem was because people did not just wake up and have new religion what did you think the problem why do you think that the fighting started Maybe you should answer the question. In your opinion. <laughs> I said it was just a time bomb. <laughs> the bomb was dead. Because people just didn't just have different opinions. They didn't just wake up to have different opinions. They didn't just wake up to change religions. The bubble busted. Hmm. Okay, somebody is feeling that somebody is growing. If this is not checked, you know, this is my territory. This is what will happen. So the, the tolerance that you said was that, and I, I, I wouldn't I would, um, probably argue on that, but the things that happened that are still now happening did not happen overnight. There was nothing new. Hmm. There was no in new introduction. Okay. The southern people came with their religion. The northern people had their religion. So did they just, you know, realize that, oh, you're not my religion. Oh, let's start fighting. Hmm. No. Okay, so we're going to take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.